Okay, by the time you're watching this, we've seen how to have um, C++ evaluate mathematical expressions and put the answers directly onto the console for us. That's not very useful if we want to do some more complicated um, calculations or if we would like the user to be able to tell us what numbers they want to use. And for that purpose, we need these things called variables. So a variable is basically just a way to save data while the program is running. Once your program ends, anything that was in the variables disappears. Um, so it's temporary. And all a variable is, is a way to name a location in memory that's going to hold information while the program's running. So we've talked before about bits and their ability to store various amounts of information. And so our variables are going to sort of link us to a location in the computer's memory where our values are going to be stored. Okay, so to, to, to declare a variable, which is what you do um, before you use it, there's actually two things that need to happen. The first is that um, we need to warn the compiler in advance um, that there's going to be a variable, and we need to tell it how much space will it need to save that variable, because um, we've said you can represent various combinations with certain numbers of bits, and if we want to save a lot of information, we're going to need the computer to hold aside more bits to store our information in. And the way that we do this is to have a type specified, so what type of information are we going to save, and then we need to choose an identifier or a name, which is what our variable's uh, word that we're choosing is. So let's talk about each of these um, separately. Okay, so data types basically tell the computer how many bits to hold aside for us. Um, if we have something like text, like a paragraph, obviously that seems like it's going to take more space than a whole number or an integer. Um, so the computer needs to know that in advance because it's going to keep room for us available while our program runs. Okay, so the first data type we're going to look at is int, I-N-T, and that is short for integer. That is for whole number values that can be positive, negative, or zero. Um, and then we actually have this variation of int called long that saves even more bits. So if we find that int is not able to store a big enough number for us, then we can switch to long and that'll set aside more bits for us. Um, there's also a short, incidentally, if you know for sure you're going to have a smaller number and memory is a big deal. Um, for our purposes, int will usually get the job done. The second data type we're going to look at is double, which is for decimal values. Um, so these can hold basically any kind of number, negative, positive, they can hold whole numbers, but they have the ability to represent decimals. So if you think you might have some kind of calculation that results in a decimal number, then you probably want to go with double as your type. Okay. Another type is char. If you want to store a single individual character, either from the keyboard or sometimes not from the keyboard, because there's all kinds of little symbols and stuff we can show on the console, um, but there's only one of them, then we can store that in char. Weirdly, our escape sequences, even though they're two characters, a backslash and something else like an N, um, those can be stored in chars as well. Okay, um, I like to look at this picture to think about why size matters. So if I have set aside the amount of space for an integer and I try to shove something bigger than that amount of space into it, obviously it's not going to fit. So int is pretty small relatively. Uh, long is a little bit bigger but may not be big enough for certain values. Um, double would be even a bigger amount of space set aside because you've got to represent which part is um, after the decimal, which part is before the decimal, etc. So we're literally telling the computer, make the container for this information the right size so that I can fit my information inside of it. And if it doesn't fit, like these little kitties don't fit in these cups quite uh, perfectly, then um, you're going to have this problem called overflow, where the computer tries to represent your value but because it can't fit it in there, um, there's going to be an error, but it's a logic error, so it's not going to stop your code from compiling. It's just going to make your calculations wrong. All right, so to declare a variable, you need the type, and you need an identifier or a name. And there are rules for what names you are allowed to choose for your identifiers. So these first um, part here, these, these syntax rules, they will actually break your code if you don't follow them. So here's the rules, syntax rules wise. Um, you can have underscores in your name, you can have uppercase and lowercase letters, you can have numbers, okay? 
but you can only start the variable with an underscore or a letter. Okay, you are not allowed to use any reserved words or keywords, and that means words that already have a meaning um, to the compiler, like main or int or return. And you are not allowed to have any spaces. Okay. The second um, type of rules are convention rules, which means they're not going to break your code, but they're not going to be considered like stylistically correct. And they are going to result in you being point-wise penalized since this is a class and we want you to get good uh, practices with regards to style. So these rules are that you start your variable names with a lowercase letter, that the variable name is mostly lowercase. It should provide a clue to what you're actually trying to represent. So if I'm representing somebody's first name, I'll name my variable first name or F name or something like that. I want to keep my identifiers concise, which means short, um, because I'm going to have to type these over and over again. If it's long, that's going to introduce the potential for error. You don't want that. And if there's multiple words, you have two choices. One is to use camel case, which means that you capitalize the first letter of each new word um, if there's multiple words. So it sort of looks like it has humps due to those uppercase letters. That's why it's called camel case. Or your other option is to separate individual words if there's more than one word with underscores. Okay, so here is your first question. I'm going to load these up on the screen, and then you should hit pause, and on your piece of paper, want answer 1, A, B, C, etc. So here are the identifiers for you to check out and say if you think they are acceptable. If you don't think they're acceptable, you should say why. So hit pause and do that now. When you're done, hit play again. Okay. So what does it look like when you declare a variable? Well, it's a good style to make it the first thing that you do in main. So we're talking about, we already have the line int main. We've got the curly bracket to start the body of the main function. And we're inside there. And it's very nice to have our variables organized right up there so we can find them easily. Okay. So you're going to say the type and the identifier for each one. And then you're going to end the statement with a semicolon. Okay. And then if the name, the identifier that you've chosen is not obvious enough, then you should put a comment to explain the purpose for which you're going to use this variable. So here's my example. I have put comments in just to show you what that would look like. Um, in these two cases, I would say those comments are not actually necessary because I have chosen names that are very obvious as to what they represent. I've got in age, which is for holding the age of a student, and double GPA, which would hold their grade point average. Okay, so I've listed these, they're statements, so they end with a semicolon, um, and that's what a variable declaration looks like. Okay, so here is your second question. I'm gonna load these both up. Um, please, on your paper, write number two, A and B, do the two things it asks, hit pause, and when you're done, hit play again. Okay, so we've got these variables, but we haven't really put anything inside them yet. And so we have two ways we can get a variable to have a value. Um, these are called assignment, which means you just set it equal to something, or you can ask the user to enter a value to save inside there. Okay, um, assignment is a fancy word that just means you take your variable and you set it equal to some value. So here is an example. I have a variable called age and a variable called GPA. I have declared them on the first two lines there, and then I set them equal to certain values. So I've got age equals 15, and if I print it out now, I'm going to see a 15. And then I can set it to 16, and now that erases the previous value. So these variables can only hold one value at a time. Okay. So anytime I do an assignment like that with an equal sign, I am erasing the previous value. It's gone forever once I do it. Okay. Here is um, another example just to show you what the values look like. So if I have my double and I set that equal to a decimal, that's perfectly acceptable. Here I've got a char called letter grade. I have to set it equal to a character. Char values get surrounded with single quotation marks or apostrophes. Okay. Here is your question number three. So in your paper, you should write three. And then please explain what is wrong with the following code. Hit pause while you answer, and then hit play again when you're ready. Okay, so here's a little bit of a tricky thing with C++. Um, I can declare a variable, and I can immediately try to print it out, 
and it will become very obvious very fast that there is garbage in there. So if I declare a variable and I don't tell it what to be equal to, um, it will be equal to a junk value. So if you try this, you're going to get the same thing, this weird negative blah, blah, blah number. Um, that is a garbage value. And that's not really cool because what if I do math on this thing and I forgot that I never set it equal to any value, now I have a problem. So it's a really good idea to initialize variables as you create them. So here's what that looks like. Um, oh, incidentally, integers, chars, doubles, longs, those are considered built-in or primitive types and they all have this problem with junk values. So here's what it means when I say initialize. And you can just do this on the same line where you declare it. You just say the type, the identifier, and set it equal to something. Um, for numbers, a natural thing to set them equal to is zero, just so I'm totally sure what value is in there and it's not garbage. Okay. Here is a little trick that you can use um, to make your life a little bit easier. If you have many variables that are the same type and they're related to each other, like they make sense, they're like a set of a pattern, then you can declare them all in one statement. So here I've got um, a bunch of letter grades for various periods and they're all type char and I can do that all in one line and just separate it by commas and notice I only have to write the word char one time because they're all chars. And then I'm going to provide a comment to explain what that whole group is. So we have variables, and then we have this other thing called constants that we can create. So a constant is a value in your program that should never be changed, okay? So the reason to do this is that you guarantee that even by accident you can't change it, because if you try to, it's going to give you a syntax error, protect yourself. It lets you um, provide code that reads more like English because you're going to use a name somewhere instead of just a straight out value. And it gives you one place where let's pretend you were representing the value of pi and you said it was 3.14 and it's a constant and you just use the word pi all through your code and then later somebody tells you you need more than two decimal places in your pi representation well you can just go to one place and change that and add the additional decimal places on okay so here's what it looks like a constant is a weird thing and it kind of goes outside of main so you go above main and Notice it starts with the word C-O-N-S-T, const, and otherwise it's just like a variable declaration. So here I've got a const double pi and set it equal to 3.14. Notice that for constants, our convention is to make them all uppercase. That way we can visually spot them very quickly. Okay, And we're declaring them globally, which is what it means when you put something outside of main. We never want to do that with our variables. Um, We'll talk about why later, but with constants, we do want them outside of main. All right, so here is your question number four. Please go ahead and pause here and answer on your paper and hit play when you're ready. Okay. If we want to use variables in math, then we can do the same operations on them that we did with just plain old numbers. Okay, and the same rules exist. So here I've got some division to demonstrate that all the same quirks apply as well. I've got an integer called num1 set equal to 1, num2 set equal to 2, and result. So I can take my variable result and set it equal to division of num1 divided by num2, which would be 1 divided by 2. And just like what happened with a literal value, when I do 1 divided by 2, I get a result of 0. Integer division happens. I can take care of that. Um, when I have variables by doing this thing called casting and all I have to do is go in front of one of those two operands in this case it's num1 and I wrap the name of the type I want it to become in parentheses in front of it so here I put in front of num1 the word double in parentheses and that will force the answer to come out like this 0.5 okay. I have these um other special operators that wouldn't make sense with a literal value, but I can use them on variables. So unary operators um, act on one value, so they just work on one variable. And this first one, plus plus, is the inc increment operator. So what it does is it just, oh, too fast. It just adds one to the current value. So here I have zero. I do plus plus. When I print it out, I get a one on the screen. 
plus plus again, I get a two on the screen, plus plus again, I get a three on the screen. There's no magic plus two or plus three. So this is just for making values go up by one. Okay. And then the opposite also exists, the decrement va uh, operator. So here I've got 10. If I do num minus minus becomes nine, minus minus again comes eight, minus minus again comes seven. Again, it's only for going down by one. All right, just like with literal values, if I mix the mode of the arithmetic, if I've got an integer and a double both um, being together in the same equation, then they get promoted to the more complicated type, which for us is a double. Okay, so in this case, I have an integer and I have a double, and the result of their division is a double. Okay, um, I mentioned casting a minute ago. And I would just want to point out one small thing is that if I have two integers and I have a variable that is a double that I want to store the result of their division in, I may think to myself, well, I'm saving it into a double variable, so it will end up being a decimal. But that will only happen if you explicitly cast. So even if my variable that I'm saving the result into is a double already, I still have to cast my expression um, or it will just save that integer value into my double and then I will lose the decimal part. Okay. All right, so that's very exciting. Now let's get to the user. All right, if we want the user to give us information, then we're going to use a command C in, console in, just like we had console out. And the data is now flowing in the opposite direction. So our operators flip around, and they face in the opposite direction. And instead of be call, being called insertion operators, they're called extraction operators. So here is, whoop, my thing goes too fast. Let me hear. Here's what that looks like. Here I've got a variable called age. I've said to the user, how old are you? And I see in, and these little extraction operators point in the, the way the information is going to flow. It's going to flow into my variable, and they are going to type their answer. So you can tell I did this a couple years ago because I'm now uh, older than this. So how old are you? And the cursor blinks here until the user types their answer. So they answered 31, hit the Enter key, and now it, it stops being paused and waiting for their input and moves on. It says, you are 31 years old. So that is how I capture information into a variable. Okay, here is another question for you, number five on your paper. So let me load these up. Oh. Please go ahead and do this. Hit pause and then hit play again when you're ready. If I have multiple values and it seems natural that the user could enter them, they're related, um, they want to just enter them all in one big fell swoop, then I can use a C in with several extraction operators to pull them all in. So here I've said, enter your GPA for each year separated by spaces. And then I have one C in and all my variables listed, each separated by extraction operators. And it will grab all those values and just fill the variables in for me so that I can print them out again down here. Okay. Um, this is, a little extra stuff tacked on that you're going to need in the next project that's coming up. Um, there is a library file called math.h that has some functions in it that you might find useful. Okay, They're just common math operations. Um, and all you have to do to get to these is include math.h. Okay, And the first one of these is pal. And so that will raise the first value you give it to the power of the second value you give it. So. These guys need to have be doubles to get it to work, or you can cast to a double, and it will give you back the answer as a double. And so here's what it looks like. I can say the five, squ five squared, oh, that should have a D on it, is, and then here's pow, and I give it 5.0 comma 2.0, and it will raise five to the second power, and it will return the answer, and then that will get printed out on the screen so that it looks like this console window right here. Okay, there's another function, squirt, I like to call it, it's for square root, also takes a double, and returns a double, and here's what it looks like. I've got, oh, I've done this one as an integer so you can see it being used with a cast. So I've got my int num, and I'm going to save the result of what this sends back into a variable called result. Notice I have had to cast right here because this guy needs to be a double to work. And then I print it out, and here I get square root of 36 is six.
Okay. There is also a function for absolute value. There's actually two versions. There's one that takes an integer and will give you the absolute value of that integer back. And there's another one, fabs, that takes a double. F is short for floating point, which is what um, describes a decimal number. And that will give you back the absolute value of a decimal value. Okay. And that is all there is to say about any of that.